Arlene McCarthy, Labour member of the European Parliament and the Parliament's rapporteur on transparency issues. You've been involved in these negotiations to get rid of corruption in exploitation industries. What does it actually mean on the ground? Well, we really wanted to get more disclosure, more transparency, particularly for those extractive industries, oil, gas, logging companies as well, who are in there taking out effectively natural resources uh, from those countries, that they should actually state very clearly, as part of their annual accounting process, uh, what payments are making to those governments and what payments are making for projects. Uh, we think that's good for the communities in those countries because if you look at Nigeria, uh, you wouldn't believe, in fact, that Nigeria is an importer of energy, even though it's got massive oil reserves and it's probably importing and got oil that's it has gone missing or been misappropriated worth over £200 billion. So this is what we're trying to tackle. We want to give back to those communities the right to hold their own governments to account as to what they do with those resources. So companies investing, extracting, must actually say what they pay, and that must be transparent, it must be clear. Uh, and equally, uh, you know, investors want to know this. It, it was a difficult negotiation, wasn't it? You had a lot of opposition from the Council and indeed even within the European Parliament, a lot of members who were a bit uneasy about this. What, what, what was the problem? Well, I think the issue is when we're trying to make big breakthroughs in areas you know, of global transparency, because in the end, this is also about global rules. We, we are following in the, in the footsteps of the US. They had the Dodd-Frank rules, the SEC in, introduced the same kind of rules. We want equivalents, we want the same kind of rules. It's a global industry, global standards. Um, industry always wants to have something that's easier for them. They argued with us that this would be too costly, but we didn't accept that argument because we knew they have to do it anyway. They know for their own accounts what money they pay for access to oil blocks uh, or for access to resources and projects. So they do that anyway. There's no big additional cost just to put that into a report. Uh, and effectively, um, they also didn't want to have to do it at the level that we wanted. We always said, let's do this at project level. They wanted to do it uh, at government level, so just what we paid that government. But, you know, we've, had, we've seen cases with companies where we would never have found out that in one case, one million was expropriated by the minister of that African country, went to a Swiss, into a Swiss bank account, and the people of Nigeria didn't get the benefit. But the money from exploitation industries is actually worth two countries in development far more than the sort of international aid they get. I mean, in the case of Africa in 2008, the amount from oil, gas and mineral exports was something like nine times the amount they received in international aid, something like $393 billion. So it really does matter. Yes, and that's exactly the point that, you know, we met with the NGOs, we met with campaigners, we met with campaigners from Publish What You Pay, uh, from Ghana, local communities. When they said to us in our hearing that for every person in that particular region, which has a very big oil refinery, uh, they just have 10 euros per person for education, health, clean water. I mean, this is not acceptable, actually, particularly when they see that they are their own resources, that's their heritage. So it's up to them to be able to hold their governments to account as to what they're doing with the income they get from these big extractive companies. The extractive companies may not be doing anything wrong, but they're paying for access, and we want to be able to hold the countries to account so that they can actually give back the natural resources revenue back to the local communities. It obviously needs to be a global thing, doesn't it? Because there are countries that are a little less scrupulous and uh, people are going to argue that, well, yes, if Europe has tight rules and the US has tight rules, there are other countries around who will want access to those raw materials and they might not be as careful. Yes, and I, I think that's a, that's a very fair argument to make and we have tackled that argument head on by looking at what is going on. Um, we have now noticed, for example, uh, that companies that want to list uh, on the Shanghai Stock Exchange do have to have reporting systems now. So it's not true to say uh, that this is something that isn't going to happen elsewhere. I believe that we're setting the agenda, we're setting the global standard together, the EU and the US, and I think that many other countries will follow suit because we're in an age now of corporate social responsibility. We're in an age uh, of investors wanting to know before they invest in that company, do you have good transparency rules and disclosure? And so I think that, as often I say, consumers, investors will drive this new agenda. What we're doing is putting the legislation in place just to push that a bit further. Arlene McCarthy, thanks very much indeed. Okay, thank you.